In this video, we're gonna figure out how to connect some of the more special X chips. Okay, so let's get started. We have like some blanks. We have a standard blank here, MD01. We have one that isolates the I2C bus and one that isolates the CL bus. So why do we have these different ones and how does it work? Let's very quickly just summarize. If I have, for example, a core like this in here and I have to connect, let's say, a sensor like my SL01. The major thing that you cannot do is to connect them opposite each other. So if I take a connector like this and I connect it the right way, it looks like this. If I connect it opposite, it's not going to burn, but it's not going to work. So always make sure that when you connect it, you have the name up here the right way around. The other thing is just that when you put it around, some of them doesn't work because they don't match here. So they will always be two sides that works to any of the other sides. So this is still very valid. But when I normally assemble this thing here, I just try to make sure that all the text in the same direction. So that way I know it works. But sometimes you want like one of the mounting holes sitting a little bit different or you have like a sensor or circuit that have like an output in one direction and it wouldn't help if you put it below so you want to maybe turn it around to the one or in this case here the other side to make sure you can have it in your circuit okay so let's get back to the main theme here so let's say for example i have a number of sensors that don't have an address selection like the sl one the sensor on these don't have a support for address selection, so therefore we haven't actually, there's no way to kind of like change the address, I square C address on the one, on the other, directly. Other X chips, such as the SD33, have a, like a solder path here. So if you make a little solder top here, this will change the address of this. In the future versions of many of the X chips, you will have a little dip switch that make it easier to switch. <clears throat> so if I want to take these two sensors here and connect them, I have a couple of options. The one option is that I have this address changer, which is the easiest one to work with. The address changer also have like a couple of different addresses. So you can put more of these together and then you can have another one changing address to another address. Okay. So I believe, uh, if I remember, it's in the data sheet that it adds hex 10 to your address. So if this is address of 3F, then it, after you put this in here and before you put that in, so in your circuit, the other will be 4F. Let me demonstrate. If I uh, have a, uh, put this address selection chip in between my core, like I do here, so now I have a core, I have an address selection. Now let's say that there is two sensors on this, but let's say the one here, before it was 3F, now it will be 4F. If I connect it straight like that, it will have a 4F address. If I put this one in, sorry, 3F address. If I put this address selector in like this, and then I put another SL1, I can now address them both from here. Okay, because this circuit and this is the errors. So whatever you put on that one side or that side, get address changes to the other side here. So I have my core here. So on this side, I'm talking to this the normal way. And here I talked, I changed the address. So when I then respond to this thing here, it will see this as 4F. Okay. And I can also put my circuit together like this because this is the same circuit on this side here so it's important how you put this in here together uh, if i take and put this uh, sl1 next to it over here it will not work these will respond to the same address they will both respond to say 4f both of them because they're after the address selection now what if i have 
more than two uh, chips I want in my same circuit. Well, then we have, and this is called an address selector, this AI team. We have our, our multiplexer. Now, the multiplexer, the big difference is that this one here, it's a fixed number it changes the address to. So you can have, for example, before we go on, I can have my uh, two SLR1s on each side of this thing here, and I can still address it using this one here, as we talked about, okay? But I can also put extra chips on both sides of the same stuff, assuming they, of course, have different addresses. So here I have SD33 on both sides, and uh, on the one side, the address of this will be 10 higher than the address on that. The reason I'm holding my finger here is that because these actually have an address change. So I wouldn't necessarily use the AI-10 for the ST33. I could put a solder dog on this and then they will have another address. And if I do that, I can of course have my circuit connected on the same side here. Because if that had a solder dog, these two will be different anyhow. I can of course have two of these on the other side of this and now I have four different ST33s. Okay, back to our multiplexer. So if I have a multiplexer here, and I let's take the ST33. So I have a ST33 here and I have a ST33 here. Now the big difference is that I have to tell in my software that I want to talk to the east port. So you can see we're given like north, east, west and south here. And there's a little salter dog. It's default to south. So what I'm telling in this circuit is that I'm connecting my master on the south side. So you can also connect it on the other side by removing the solder dot here and put it into other places. So, <clears throat> but that circuit here also have a number of different addresses. So I can actually create, and when there's three of these, that means there's two and third. So that means there's eight different addresses for this circuit. So I can nest, uh, you know, I can have tons of these ones on. So if I have one, I have a lot of these uh, ST33s, I can do that by changing the address on this. And of course, in this case, I can also change the address here. So I can keep on building more and more and more um, solutions by adding uh, more of the, the multiplexers. This one here can take a third one. So if I put in um, this one here, then you can see I can have a third one. Now, one of the things that people kind of like think uh, then do is that they have mistakenly put in for example a blank because they want to have like some rigidity in a circuit which is like one of the benefits of uh, X in a box in general so if I do this thing here to give it rigidity and redundancy because remember the power and signal runs around here but the problem is now that if you do this thing here and you say, I want to talk to the SD33 on the east side, you loop around and actually also talk to that. So you will still have confusion in your, in your circuits. So therefore, this one here cannot transfer the I2C signal through. And for that reason, we have a uh, MDO2, oh, sorry, yeah, MDO2, which is like a um, isolated, I square C isolated chip. So if I put it together like this, now it will work. I will have the rigidity, I will have power redundancy, I will not have signal redundancy, but I will have the power redundancy. And I will have redundancy on a cell bus, which also runs through here. And we have an MDO3 here to isolate the cell bus if you wanted to do that as well. And of course, I can, uh, you know, let's say I want to put in like a SLO1 in here because I want to kind of like squeeze that into my project in my limited space I might have. This is not going to work either. I can address this thing either the one way or the other way and that's fine. But the I2C will loop around. So in this case, if I have to have that space, I have to just remove one of the, the connectors here. I can still screw it down and I have to isolate it by not having connector here. <clears throat> so this is the way it works here. Of course, it's the same on the other side. 
and it can start being a little confusing when you start having a, a circuit and you try to squeeze in a number of different sensors. But this is the one way and this is of course the other way if you have room for it. And just remember that even though I have three SD33 here, I can still have one on this side. I don't have another one here at me, but let's fake it a little bit and say this was a SD33. Then I can actually address this one and these three in this circuit as it is without changing any of the solder points or any solder points here. Now, the multiplexer is useful, for example. Let's say you want to do something with a lot of server controllers, um, a, a lot of servos. So our standard OC05 server controller can take eight servos. And the server controller itself can be addressed with a similar setup like here. So you can actually connect eight server controllers without starting using multiplexers. It means you can control 64 servos just like that. But of course, now you can start putting them into AI1 and you can get into you know, thousands of servers you can control that way, which might be interesting if you do like a project with mirrors or something like that. Uh, the last tip I just want to explain that's different from where it's important in what direction you put it together is our XT10 here. So the XT10 um, is a chip that is a column counter. And the A circuit is the circuit that analyzes where the power consumption. And the B circuit is actually your circuit you want to analyze. So let's say I put battery power in on the one side and I have a payload here on the other side. <coughs> and of course I want to see how that goes, but I can connect it to my cell monitor on, uh, on my computer or my software could make use of a little screen here. So in this circuit here, I will have a circuit here that isolated from a circuit here. Now, um, this chip here, and of course this circuit needs power that doesn't come from that side. So for that reason, you know, I will need to power this up separately. So I will power that up. So I have a PU1 here that can power my circuit. So now I have a circuit here that is completely isolated from that circuit. The only difference is that uh, the power of that little chip actually uses power that, but it's in like the nano amps, so it's very, very little. So what this circuit does is that it calculates a column, uh, the column, the, 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 the current that goes past here and count it. So column is, uh, is um, uh, current over time. So if you have a circuit here that turns on and off the relay and measures and sleeps and things like that, and instead of you kind of like constantly just write out, you know, how much power it uses in, in, in current and calculate it, this little chip here will then accumulate it. And you can then read it out. You can let, for example, let it run for like a day and see how much power does it use. You can use it to check how much power does this circuit here takes on your AA batteries that you might have in the circuit here. So you can both use it to see what is my battery capacity and you might but just put a dummy circuit here to drain it faster. But you might want to have like the accurate circuit because it might be the battery lasts longer or shorter depending on you know, how violent the battery usage is and over how long, long time it happens. So this gives you an idea about how to calculate it. But again, the purpose of the video here is just to show that this XT10 here have to be put in separately. And of course, again, you can't put in like an empty uh, one here in the corner here because then the I square C from here will connect to here and that will confuse uh, that chip there because the I square C here might interfere with this thing here. And of course, even worse is that the power from this thing here will go in and interfere with the power on that thing. And therefore the column counter might not really pick it up because maybe the power will go this way instead of that way. So that's a little video. I hope it was helpful. Um, Please feel free to comment below if you uh, believe I said something wrong or you want something more uh, explanation on how we did this thing here. Thank you very much.